Hey, what's up everyone? And thank you for checking out my PO studio. I had some questions about the setup after I posted a video of a little jam that I was working on. And so, hey, I got you. Here's a walkthrough of my setup. This is what I would consider to be my ultimate PO studio. If you like what you see here and you wanna hopefully build your own similar ultimate PO studio, I will give you links in the description for all the items that you see here. So just to give you a little sample of what I got going on. All right, so what are we looking at here? We are jamming on four pocket operators. I've got control over each one in regards to level, EQ, and effects right here in front of me on my iPad Air. It's a brand new 2020 iPad Air. At the center, the hub of it all is a TC Helicon Blender. This is a mixer interface. It can be used as a standalone inter uh, mixer, or it can be an audio interface and a mixer. It connects via USB to my iPad. So over here, I've got like a little anchor USB hub that I use. And right now, I am actually plugged directly into the iPad here with this adapter from my blender. But if I wanted to, I could put the blender in the USB hub, have that go to my iPad, and then I can plug in other devices such as MIDI controllers and whatnot. But in this case, with just the POs, I'm good with just going direct into the iPad adapter. And so now I have control over each channel right here on my iPad. That's at the hub. That makes mixing the POs a lot easier. Um, but the key to this setup is actually this little, it's basically a sync splitter. And there's a website called Tindy. I'll put a link to the designers page in the description below. He makes a lot of these in different sizes. He has actually a couple of things that he has there, um, that you guys might want to check out, but I got this one. It's a little sync splitter. And so that takes the sync from your master PO and sends it out all these little outputs here. Okay. Then those syncs go into your other POs. Now that frees up your audio output for just a stereo audio. Okay. And at the very end is the audio output for the master PO. So that's what I got going on. I picked up a bunch of these little cords here from Amazon. And then I have some of the shorties from Teenage Engineering as well. Now, you'll see I have four pocket operators. I haven't been hesitant to uh, crack this bad boy open yet, but hopefully soon. I'm just waiting for the right moment. I also have a Twisted Electron's Happiness, which is not in the mix yet. It has been in the mix at one point. Uh, but not in the new setup yet. I'm still going to add that. I have one sync output here available that I can use. And then some folks were asking me, uh, why the Go Mixer? Well, that's just so I can get a direct audio feed to my phone when I'm creating these videos. So you'll see here, I've got my mic 
coming out of another device with a little noise reducer and a limiter on it. So that's on a separate iPad with microphone I'm talking into now. It goes here. And then the output from the blender goes to the input here on the Go Mixer. And now I can get a direct audio feed into my phone while I'm videoing this. It's all on an iPhone. And the cool thing, there's a lot of cool things about the blender, but another cool thing is that you have all these different headphone outputs. These are all assignable. So you could have different mixes even on each one as well. So there you have like additional outputs as well. In this app, this app's called AUM, AUM, and it's basically a really cool, originally it was designed as an audio unit mixer. And that's pretty much where it excels, but it also has some MIDI features and mapping and things that you can do with MIDI that make this really kind of modular. And I'll show you some things later about that. As far as adding another input with the blender, it's as simple as going here, hardware input. And now you're gonna see all the blender inputs, right? I can even assign a blender out, output here. Um, and then on top of that, you could also send it to a mix bus or another app if you want. So it's kind of a virtual mixer with a lot of other cool features. Now, in this case, I don't have these syncing up to my iPad. I have the tempo set here to 80. That's the BPM I'm working in. I'm not, I'm just going to track audio here. I'm not going to be syncing anything up from the iPad. But if you have an extra iPhone, you can drop that in the mix, go into this PO, which would be your master, change your sync settings, and use a little app called Korg MicroSync. I think that's says, or Sync Control. Sorry, Korg Sync Control. It's in the App Store. And now you can have Ableton Link between your phone and your iPad and send the master clock out from the phone. And now you're with that setup, and I might do another video with that too, um, you can sync the POs to your iPad apps as well as other things like Korg Volkas, for example. So that's another cool thing you can do with all this. Um, another thing before I go, I wanted to mention to you that um, I'm using AUM. You don't have to use AUM. There are all kinds of apps you can use. GarageBand, you can use Cubasis, and do a lot of things with your POs. You can sample them on the fly with some samplers, like Koala is a great app for sampling. <laughs> All right, so if you're still here, I'm gonna show you. If you're still watching, here's another cool thing you can do with AUM. All right, so we're getting in tighter here, getting in a little closer, because I wanna show you how you can set up a type of modulation within AUM by using a low pass filter, okay? And there is a built-in low pass filter, it comes with the app. And, right, real basic. So when you have a static loop and, you know, it repeats enough times, it starts to get a little boring. So when people ask me, hey, can I, you know, how can I make this static loop a little more interesting and less boring? I always tell them, well, it's pretty easy. Just modulate it. And, you know, panning is a really cool way to modulate audio, uh, you know, with some automation on it. Or in this case, we're going to do a filter sweep with a low pass filter. And I'm going to use an app called Rosetta LFO to send the LFO information over to the low pass filter cutoff. And so the first thing you want to do after opening this app is check your CC number, 
that's the MIDI control change number and the MIDI channel number. Make sure those line up with what you're assigning them to, what you're mapping them to. In this case, the cutoff on that filter. So to keep things simple, I have it on MIDI channel one, CC channel one, CC number one, sorry. And then here's the channel we want to affect with automation. And so we're just gonna hit that little box down there, go to your low pass filter, frequency, make sure this is on channel one. And in AUM, it's not gonna work until you have your MIDI routing set up. So this is the routing here. And then you want Rosetta LFO to go out to MIDI control, built-in MIDI control. Just tap that box and boom, it's routed. Now, hit play and you'll see the filter's moving. Let's drop that reverb back on. Now it's nice and dreamy, right? All right, so one last thing. I know this was a lot longer than you probably anticipated. It was kind of a deep dive. I just wanted to give you a more tip about the roll and go mixer if you're interested in one of these. The cord they give you is super short. It's like six inches long or something and it's ridiculously short. I use my phone and the go mixer for these videos so I don't want the mixer by the phone. My phone is up on a boom stand right now in a mic clip. Okay, a phone clip on a mic stand, sorry. And so I had to run out and I just looked up uh, extension cable. So basically I got a long extender. It just goes all the way up the boom cable. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. All right guys, so I'm gonna cut it now because there's a lot more I can talk about. Maybe we could put it in another video if you have any questions. I always reply to my comments and questions section on YouTube. Please ask away if you're still missing something or you don't get it. Let me know. I'll do my best to explain that to you. If you really like this kind of content, please subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell so you get notifications because I do create videos once every two weeks and sometimes they're just jams, sometimes they're walkthroughs or tutorials. Sometimes um, I'll get a new piece of gear. Like for example, I got a 1010 Music Blue Box that I'm going to integrate into the PO setup to give you an alternative uh, to the, the Helicon, uh, sorry, to the Blender and the iPad. The Blue Box is really cool. It's a digital mixer and audio recorder. So I'm gonna do another video with that in the mix very soon, um, integrating that into the PO setup. So again, please subscribe if you haven't. I thank you guys for watching. Be safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you soon.